friend of mine run herds of cattle in there for the past oh, eight or ten years up on the Repertoire Forest. And there's something about nature that calls out. No man could look right in the face of nature and say there's no God. And how the God makes the hills. We were walking, the snow was beginning to melt, walking along the side of the mountain. This great, tall, rough man that eight years ago when I met him was a perfect infidel, said there was no such a thing as God, and about 30 minutes later led him to Jesus Christ, who is a humble Christian. He turned and threw his arms around me and dropped his gun on the ground again crying. He said, Billy, I, I brought you up here for one purpose. He said, I wanted to go to church today. Of course, you have to know their language. It was a church, just as much as I've ever been in my life, a great, great cathedral of the forest. And there, both of us on our knees, with our heads bowed to the ground, mile, we'd walk 30 miles that day to get to the summit. In this great cathedral where the winds were blowing, God was there. And both of us weeping like babies, why? Something inside of us called for that. And if there's something calling for that, there's got to be something to respond to that. Some time ago, let's take 50 years ago, or 100 years ago, we'd say, if someone would have said there was such a thing as electricity or light, they'd have been laughed at. But there was a man named Benjamin Franklin. He got a kite, put a key on the end of it, and was fishing in the skies because there was something in him that told him that when this light would flash, it would light. So they could catch it somehow. He knew it was static electricity. And he caught it in a bottle. And many of you people remember even your grammar school education when he got it in a bottle, he began to scream, I got it, I got it. He had it, but he didn't know what he had. That's the way many Christians are today. You get saved, Jesus forgives your sins, you say, I got it, but you don't know what you got. That's as far as Benjamin Franklin took it. But what was God doing then? He was fixing to reveal to the world electricity. He had a Benjamin Franklin to do it. Then he had a fellow by the name of Thomas Edison, wasn't satisfied with, I got it. He said, if I've got it, it's got benefits for me. As David said, who forget not all of his benefits. So Thomas Edison, tireless night, tried tens of thousands of wars. He would try one war, it wouldn't work on that kind. He couldn't get the current to follow the wire. He tried another, another, another. Was he defeated? Certainly not. He couldn't be defeated. He couldn't be. There was something inside of him told him that that was life. And he believed it with all of his heart. And before, if he believed it like that, there, it's got to happen. There's a deep, a calling to a deep. There's a deep to respond to it. There's something had to life. With a cup of coffee and a sandwich, he'd work all night. If one wire didn't work, he wasn't discouraged like many of we Christians get. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves, calling ourselves Christians who believe in the great Jehovah the promises that he gives and the benefits he's got for us and the first little discouragement we throw it away but not thomas edison he believed that they would lie no matter that he was called crazy but that didn't stop him he believed it would lie and he kept on until he proved that it would lie and he gave the world electricity 
Well, electricity's been here all the time. We've always had electricity. But they didn't know nothing about it until we had a Thomas Edison and a Benjamin Franklin. And friends, there's something in my heart that tells me that God is a healer. And if there was not even the Bible or anything to, to confirm it anymore, as deep as I believe it in my heart, it'd have to be a healing fountain somewhere. Before there could be a deep call, there has to be a deep to respond to that call. In other words, I read in a paper some time ago where a little boy, a little boy, ate the rubbers off of a racer, racers off a pencil, brother. And he ate the rubber pedal off of a bicycle. Well, they couldn't understand. They take him to the doctor, they sent him to the clinic, and the little fellow's body needed sulfur. Well, if if there's something in here calling for sulfur, there's got to be a sulfur to respond to that call. See what I mean? The little boy was taken from the ground where there's sulfur. The bodies are made from the ground. And there was something in here lacking sulfur and calling for sulfur. So there had to be a sulfur first, the positive, before there could be the negative. And when he called, then they put sulfur in his body, it satisfied. An operation was performed on a woman here sometime, telling a postmortem. The woman would eat as many as 20 onions a day, and the doctor would take her off of them. They said it just, it'd kill her. And when they took her, took her off the onions, it killed her. And when holding a force mortar, they found a lump of some sort in her. And they took that lump and put it in, in water and put onions in this water, and it would dissolve the onions. The woman couldn't help it. There was something craving it. A deep calling. How many in here believe in divine healing? Let's see your hand. Well, that's the very truth that there's a fountain open somewhere. The deep calling to the deep. And God tonight, I've, I've believed it all my life. By God's grace, he's helped me to confirm it. And tonight I'm still searching wires. I found two wires that'll bring the visible power of God for divine healing into the individual. That's two things I find. One of them is love. The other is faith. And they're sweethearts. And when love gets married to faith, Love always accompanies faith. When you love God enough to know that he can't lie to you, it'll create a faith in there that'll make you believe his word, and every word he said is positive truth, and you accept it with an unadulterated faith that won't say no, it'll produce just exactly what he said he would do. The deep calling to the deep. Forget not all of his benefits, who forgiveth all of thine iniquities, who healeth all of thy diseases. In the church, God has set people in the church for different things. Some of them are teachers, apostles, prophets, gifts of healing, speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, and different gifts that he's, God has set them in the church as it please him. All for one purpose, to edify the body, to edify the church, to bring us together, to make us love him more. And to my part tonight is the divine revelation of the Son of God that by sovereign grace and election, God gave us. Seeing visions just as common to me as it would be for you to get hungry. It's a nature. And there's where the churches that fail today, and many I say it with reverence, brother and sister, that when we try to be something that we are not, 
You can't make your eyes blue when they're brown. Who taking salt can add one cubic to his statue? Gifts and callings are without repentance. People are born to be singers. Some time ago, I was buying my little girl a little piano for Christmas. She seemed like she kind of inclined to be play music. And I was standing, and my wife cannot play either. And I was trying to pick out a chord on a little thing. And a little boy came up to me, about eight years old, his little shoes off his feet, his little hair need trimming very bad. It was down on his shoulders. Old raggy coat on. He stood and looked at me a little bit. So what are you trying to do, mister? I said, I'm trying to make this card. He said, let me have it. Well, I thought, what would a poor little eager child like that know about that piano? Oh, my. He was a master with it. He'd play anything he wanted to. Well, I looked at him, and he walked over to one of these little telephones, and he picked it up and played Silent Night. I never heard anything like it. And then took a, about a six or eight inch piece of gas pipe laying there in the hardware store and blowed the Star Spangled Banner through that gas pipe. I said, son, did you ever have a music lesson? I said, what's that? See, he was born a musician. It was just a gift to know how to do it. Just like tuning that instrument, the piano, whatever it would be. As far as it's making a noise, it would be all right to me. But the master knows just how much to tighten the string. It's something in him tells him that. And that's the way gifts are. They're just natural. To see a vision doesn't make you well, but it is a help to you. It helps set the church in its place. For instance, like... How many of you, you, how many of you ever dreamed a dream? Let's see your hands, a, a dreams a dream. Well, I see there's just a, at least two thirds of you. There's people who doesn't dream dreams at all. Now the person who, listen closely. The person who dreams a dream is not sleeping sound. A dream is your subconscious. Let's see the normal man, here's his first conscious. And here's his subconscious. Now when this one becomes an active, this one is active. Now, you people that dream dreams, you dream dreams years ago that you still remember today. Very plain. Is that right? Well, there was some part of you somewhere, because you still, in this conscience now, you remember the scenes you saw in some other conscience. Now, God dwells in there, and he speaks many times through dreams and said he would with old man in the last days. But it's not too accurate. Joseph dreamed dreams, King Nebuchadnezzar, but if there's not an interpreter, a spiritual interpreter, dreams are not too accurate. Now that's your subconscious though. Here's your first, there's your second. Now what about that man who doesn't dream a dream? His subconscious would be way back, like back at the wall. He never gets to it. He sleeps sound. Nothing alarms him. Now, he can't help because he doesn't dream a dream, and neither can this one help because he does dream a dream. What if you people dream dreams if I'd say to you, dream me a dream? You couldn't do it. It'd be impossible. Now, closely, a seer... Now, God made you so you dream a dream. He made the others so he did not dream a dream. But a seer, or prophet, is not something laid hands on and wished over him a prophet. A prophet is born from birth. Gifts and callings without repentance. Jesus Christ is the Son of God from the Garden of Eden. Moses is born in the world of prophets, a right child. John the Baptist, 712 years before he was born, he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah saw him. God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1, 4, Before you was even formed in your mother's womb, I knew you and sanctified you and ordained you a prophet over the nation. So you see, it's 
without repentance. Now this man who dreams dreams can't help it. The man who doesn't dream a dream can't help it. But a seer, his subconscious is neither back there, neither is it here. It's right here. He doesn't go to sleep. He just breaks from one dimension to the other, wide awake. He can't help that. And he can't do that on his own will. It's God. But then if, if you're given a gift and don't use it for the glory of God, then God will make you answer for it at the day of judgment. Please, without any reflection. I hear on the radio when I'm in the middle part of the country here, a man named Mr. Foley. I believe they call him by slur name or given name, Red. He sang a piece here I hear not long ago called Peace in the Valley. What a marvelous voice. But what's he using it for? God will require that. We had a Stuart Hamilton that was converted in our brother Grimm's meeting out in California, movie star. God blessed him and let him write a, or sing a record. There's no secret what God can do which is taken the first place in all the songs in the, in the nation. Beautiful, one many to Christ. God makes us answer for our talent. As a little baby of about three minutes old, born in a little cabin up here in Burkesville, Kentucky, a little old crude-looking calf cabin with clapboard shingles, my mother is laying on a straw tick with a shuck pillow. Perhaps there's many a Kentucky here tonight that don't even know what that means. A straw tick, a shuck pillow, shuck stripped out and put in a pillow case. A little bed built in the side of the house with no floor in the cabin. A stump cut off about that big, around three legs in it for a table. A piece taken off of an old side of a barn to make a bench to eat on. Poor. My mother 15, my daddy 18. A window that you don't have no glass in it, just push a little door like back and that's the window. That was a place that God gave me my life. When the midwife, we were 40 miles from a doctor. When the midwife washed me and laid me on the, my mother's arm, she opened the window about 5 o'clock in the morning for the early break of the day to shine across. She wanted to look at her child. And through that came the light. Everybody began to cry. At about 15, 18 months old, I had my first vision. I was standing at a little branch, and something spoke to me from a bush and said, you're going to live near a city called New Albany. I spent my life there. Two years later, we moved. All in all, ministers discouraged me when I got to be a man, said it was of the devil. But one glorious night, when I was trying to pray and telling the Lord that I loved him and I didn't want to be wrong. I wanted to do what was right. And I asked him to take it away from me. Here come a man walking across the floor and told me what was true. Sent from the presence of God. Told me to go around the world, pray for kings and monarchs and so forth. I was then a Baptist preacher, belonged to Missionary Baptist Church. When I told the bishop that, he laughed in my face. Said I had a nightmare. I laid my credentials on his desk. I said, if that's the way the Baptist Church thinks about it, I'll serve God. I know nothing about other people who would believe it, but I know that if God had sent it, God had somebody who received it. I started off. You know the story. And tonight, I'm here in my home state. Where I was born. I love it. I love its people. And I'm here to do my best to represent him who loves us and has redeemed us from our sins by the washing of his blood by his word. 
And I, say as David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all of our iniquity, who heals all of our diseases. My Christian friends, by divine gift tonight, if I can represent Jesus Christ to you, and you can believe on him a little stronger and be healed of your sickness and same as forgiven of your sins, I'll be a very happy man when I lay down on the pillow tonight. If I shall not rise tomorrow, God sees fit. I've done my best. I've told the truth. I've been honest. The gift of God has been tested in every nation under every demon power that could come up. To all kinds of demonology and scientists, and it's went through the fiery pit. There hasn't been a time but what God has come out victorious and overruled it. I can only be sincere with you as my fellow citizens of the kingdom of God and countrymen of Kentucky. And may God bless you. And may the angel of God who fed me all my life and brought me to this spot, may he come present tonight and confirm that I've told you the truth. That's my prayer. While we bow our heads. Dear Lord, from the depths of my heart I've said these few words of these fine people, many of them are poor people, as we're all struggling for our food and our clothes, and knowing it soon we're to lay down and leave it all across over the river. And someday I, too, have to come down there. I begin to know that the years are slipping on. I know it's getting closer and closer. Some of these days I've got to come down to the crossing. Father, I've asked you long ago not to let me have trouble there at the river. I want to go over peaceful at that time. And when I preached my last sermon, prayed for the last sick person, sold the Bible, I fought my way through every briar patch over every hill, taking every Philistine and all that I could. Maybe an old man, as Branhams usually do, break down with palsy and shake. I can see myself standing there pretty soon as an old shaking man or a king. Life is finished. The waves of Jordan is dancing in my face. I know I must go. And Father, I want to lay the helmet down on the shores. Stick the sheep the sword back into the sheath of eternity. I want to cry to you to push out the light bulb. Let me come over home, Lord, to a better land. And there may I meet everyone that's in this meeting tonight. Happy, the immortal bodies where we'll never pray for the sick no more, where there'll never be no sickness or no sorrow. And Father, while we're here in this battle of life, let us be strong and courageous, knowing that just across the water on earth lays the blessful eternity. And help us to come to that day as great warriors, with battle scars all over us, showing the results of a battle. Must I be carried home to heaven on a flower bed of ease, while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas, said the poet. God, let us come that way. Just keep us. And now tonight, may the Holy Spirit come. May the angels of God encamp about every one here. May the great power of the resurrected Lord Jesus just shadow over us. May the angels of God sweep their wings over this building into the still dew drops of divine healing drop on every sick person. May pardon to sin drop on every sinner. And may they be saved. And heal, for we ask it in the name of thy beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Still that same hundred from my time. Let's get the last part of it tonight. Let's get who's got prayer card eighty five? Eighty five, ninety, ninety five, hundred. Who's got eighty five? Prayer card eighty five. We'll turn it over. It's a little bitty blue card. It's got a number on the back of it and a letter. And it's got your name and address on the front. Prayer card 85. 
Raise up your hand. Who has prayer cards? Did I miss? Oh, 85? 86? 86, raise up your hand. Come over this way, lady. 86, who has prayer card? 86, all right. 87? 88, 89, 90? Line up this way to, up to 100. And see if you got them all. Because sometimes people are deaf and can't hear and they miss their turn in the prayer line. Look at your neighbor's card. Come right down here, if you will, sister, and line up right down this way. Now, if somebody's unable, look around and if somebody, if they're unable to, if their number's called and they're unable to get here, we'll have ushers to pack them up here. And if somebody may be deaf and can't hear, and some of them help him down there, if you will, one of them help him count and see if he's got it. Or he's all right? He said he had it. It's all right. Thank you. All right. And all right. While they're doing that and lining up, we we'll see if we got everyone lined up all right. Let's sing this good old song, not only believe, let's just raise up our hands and say, now I believe, right now, Lord, now I believe. Will you do it with me everywhere? Now, come on. Now I believe. Transfiguration. I see a father has got a child. He's got epilepsy. They called it a devil. That's what it is. Brother Bosworth probably gets that. Now, don't miss the teaching. Because you've got to know what sickness is and what's the result and how to get rid of it. If you don't, it'll leave you right here. I'll assure you that. But if you don't know how to fight Satan... It'll come right back to you. I've seen man stand here and read this Bible, been totally blind for 20 years, and two or three days come back just blind as he was in the first place. They don't understand. You've got to know how to do it, how to take a hold, and how to hold to God, and what the diseases are. They're devils. Now, but Jesus coming down here with a man with a boy that he says he all times the devil takes him he throws him into the fire and he throws him in uh, to the water and tries to drown him and says he has the devil and Jesus said got your how many missing 91 92 and 93 is that right son prayer card 91 92 and 93 is missing. Now, there's two of them. See, maybe the next person... I only see one stretcher case tonight. The little boy, watch his prayer card, sister. If he doesn't have one or... Now, what's the next one? Now, 92. Look on the back. Look at your neighbor's card. He may have 92 and he's deaf and can't hear or something. You see. 92. He may be deaf and he, he'll miss his place, you see. Look on your neighbor's card and see if, it, if they got 92. You see anyone It looks near you like would be deaf or something and they'd, they'd miss their place. All right. Now, if you're not, now tomorrow will be other cards again, you see. All right. Now, Jesus moving down and he's seen this man and he fell... The man fell at his feet and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he's seriously vexed with the devil, and how he throws him in the fire, so forth. And said, I took him to the disciples, and they could do nothing for him. He said, I brought him to you. Jesus said, I can, if ye believe, 
For all things are possible to them that believe. Is that right? And when he cast the spirit out of the boy, he was more sick than he ever was. He fell like a dead man. And they thought he was dead. But it's the spirit that had left him. All right. Is that maybe the next man? Do you have a prayer card, sir? No. All right. All right. What's that? Okay, got it. All right. All right, you come, lady. Now, that same Lord Jesus, now I'm going to ask you one thing if you'll do. Now, during this time, I haven't, I can't see the clock too well, but it'll give a little recess of time. We try to get out early each night so we won't hold you late. But uh, this is kind of a slow. The trouble of life today, friends, we're too fast with things, don't you think? You're rushing through life too quick. Take your time. Many of them said, well, I go to the meeting, but I didn't get prayed for, so I went home. You'd sit at Mayo's clinic for three months if you got in there, and they'd never do nothing for you. They'd just tell you what was wrong with you. John Hopkins, they don't operate on you nothing. They just tell you, advise you to go to another doctor, but you'd get it, you sit there for months just to find out what's wrong with you. And then you're told by man, and this way is by Almighty God. See how fast we are, how Christians have got away from the faith. I trust that God will help you. How do you do, lady? Now, this lady here, I don't know her. And I, God in heaven knows I know nothing about that woman. I never saw her in my life. I guess this is our first time meeting this lady. First time. You don't know nothing about me. And I don't. The lady's a Christian because she has a real welcome spirit. And she's conscious that something's here at this, at this platform now. Not a man. The angel of God is here. At the judgment day, when I meet each of you people, where we all stand at that day, you hear on this night of the 4th of October, of November, rather, here at Owensboro, Kentucky, the angel of God at 9 o'clock this night is not two foot from where I'm standing right now. I can't explain it, but I know it. I know his presence. And I know he's here. I know it's been the one that's been with me all my life. He's the one who told me, I'll be with you. You who read the little book and get the story. He's here. Now, he knows the lady. I don't. And if I can yield to him, then I'll know her. Or he'll tell me. And if, if I can't yield to him or he has no will for me, then I will know nothing of the woman. But I want everyone to be just as reverent as you can. And remember, please be reverent while this is going on. And if there's someone critical or something, I'm not responsible for that. And, and I'm not responsible for interruptions, see, because it'll go from one to another. I've seen times, friends, when evil spirits like epilepsy was cast from people and chairs that swing in the floor, demons and things like that. You see, as many as 20 and 30 at a time fall with epilepsy, frothing in the floor, are normal people. So be reverent and do just as you're told to do. It's not plain now. It's Scripture, God's Word. How many remembers in Acts 19 where some boys tried to cast an epilepsy spell out of a man and the demon come up on the boys and they all took epilepsy and stripped their clothes and run through the streets? You remember that? See? It's the same thing. I'll be just as reverent as you can. I want to talk to her. And now, if this woman, she's raised her hand, she doesn't know me, and I, I know not her. But God knows us both. Now, he knows what she's done in her life. He knows what I've done in my life. Now, he can reveal it. And if he will, how many of you will accept him and say, I believe Jesus Christ is here? If, does anybody out there know this woman? Raise your hand. Anyone know the woman around here? Just, yeah, I see people that know her. All right. Now, I just want to talk to you. Now, if Jesus has risen from the dead, as he said that he, as we know he has, 
Then he said he'd be with us and in us, always to the end of the world. That right. Then if he has risen from the dead, he said, the things that I do shall you do also. And he said he could do nothing except the Father showed him. In other words, God the Father was in the pillar of fire. That was God the Father. And then no one could touch him, not even Moses, even if a, a beast touched the mountain, it, was, it had to be killed with a dart. You know that story. Well then, that was in a burning bush, a halo of fire, a pillar of fire. And then that pillar of fire come down and was made flesh among them. That same pillar of fire was God yet. What? And then when this Son of God died, then his spirit came back into man, sinful man, and that was a holy virgin born, come back, and that makes God like a three-foot rule. See? The first twelve inches, God the Father. Second twelve inches, God the Son. Third twelve inches, God the Holy Spirit. That's the reason we were commanded to baptize in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But it's the same God. It's not three gods. Which, that'd be heathen, our God. But it's our God, one God. It's God unfolding himself down to man. And the reason he's doing that is so he can get down and live among man. Isn't he lovely? Now, he's done that so that he can help you tonight. And here, me a sinner, like you, saved by grace, but God has unfolded himself down into mortal beings that he could take through one and help another. Not, he, I couldn't heal you, because that's already did at Calvary. I couldn't forgive sin or heal sick. Nobody could. God did that. But now gifts are put in the church to point to that. Now, I'm carrying a conversation with you like Jesus did with the woman at the well. Is that right? To find out where her trouble was. And you're conscious that something is near you. Just the audience might know. That feeling is strange. You know you're in the presence of a divine being somewhere. You don't know just what's taking place, but something strange taking place, isn't it? If that's right, raise your hand. See? Now, I'm not reading your mind. It's just an angelic being. You're sure of that. Uh, is your trouble in your nose? Yes. It's a cancer. A cancer in, in the nose. And you're also disturbed about someone. If you got a boy, and the boy's in the hospital, is that right? And he has stomach trouble, something in his stomach. It's cancer in his stomach. Is that true? Now, Mother, that was my boy, but it wasn't me. See, whatever what was told you, was that the truth? Every bit of the truth? You know how it would I, I know nothing of that, do I? Well, ever what it was is the truth. Then there's something here that's revealing to you something about yourself. Is that right? You accept it as the angel of God sent from the presence of God to help you? You do? Come here just a minute. Would you bow your head with me? Merciful Father, as I lay hands upon our sister and ask for divine mercy, that you will heal her body and bless her in every way. And whatever she has need of, I ask thee, our Heavenly Father, to supply everything she has need of. Heal her and make her well. Grant it, Lord. I pray this prayer and send it to you because you said these words. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. And I ask for her recovery as a Ask in Jesus Christ's name for this demon to leave her. Amen. Now, God bless you, sister. We want you to report to us. If you, you believe you're healed? Or you live close now? I want you, I want you to come back and testify in a few days and tell us what's happening. Will you do that? God bless you, sister. All right. God bless you. All right. Do you believe with all your heart now? All your heart, more you talk to people, more it reveals, you see. Usually it don't say very much to people, because a vision takes strength from you. One vision will take more strength from you than preaching all day long. 
How do you do, lady? I suppose we're also strangers, are we? We're strangers. God knows us both, doesn't he? We were probably born miles apart from years difference, and, but God has fed us all this time, and we're both in his right here before him tonight. We have to stand by our testimony. We rise or fall by Jesus Christ. Is that right? And you're just a person that was out there and called up here to the platform, and the first time we met in life. Yes. But Jesus knows us all. You're a Christian. And now I, I believe that, Mother. Well, you remind me of my own mother. I, I believe that with all my heart that you're a servant of God. You're a Christian. God bless you for that. Now, you know that there's something in other that's reacting on you now. Something. If you'll notice, each night, as faith begins to move up, you see, watch the difference as the patients come. Wait for a few nights. If God settles on the meeting, you'll, you'll see things that like you had never dreamed of seeing. When the people, you're just a little scared now, many of you. Don't say you're not. <laughs> I feel I know. You're just a little, well, wonder what. That'll all wear away in a few days. You'll come into one spirit and one accord. And then you'll see the Lord go to moving greatly. Now, Mother, of course, you and I, being strangers and never met, God will have to do something here to reach. But if he will do something, maybe something about your life somewhere, or something taking place way back down the road from you as a little girl, or... Or do something another year that's absolutely the truth, and you'll know it's the truth. Then it'll tell you what the future will be. If you, if that was true, then you know what the future will be to be true, wouldn't you? But you know us knowing it's not one another. But he's here in his love and full of compassion. You know that. Um, I want you to look at me. Not, I don't see it, what I mean like that. Like Peter said, look on up me, see, as he passed through the gate. In other words, just to get his attention, see. And I believe it was Jehoshaphat one time went out to see the prophet Elijah. And he said, if it wasn't, there's a whole bunch of the kings, three of them. And one of them was an unbeliever. He has been worshiping idols from his mother Jezebel. And the prophet got all stirred. He said, if it wasn't I respected the presence of Jehoshaphat, I wouldn't even look at him. See, the prophet was angered. And he... Uh, that's strange to think a prophet to get angry, but he did. And they had to play some music to make him get, that's right, to make him get in the, in the spirit. And then the spirit came up on him, but then he saw a vision and told him what to do. Is that right? Now, it's the same God that lives tonight. That's right. The same God. Elijah's gone, but God hasn't. God takes his man, but never his spirit. Now, I've talked to you for a purpose, see, to contact your spirit. And now your spirit is falling right in line with the angel of the law. Uh, you've got the... Uh, it's a, it's a gallbladder. It's some, a gallbladder trouble. Yes, ma'am. And I see it's in a doctor's office or something where they was taking a picture. And then you had uh, uh, see something in another. You're alarmed about it that... Being a cancer or something in your, you thought it was a cancer. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's a nervous condition. And I'll tell you, long time ago or something, you've had an operation on the head or something, or there's something taken away or something. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. It was a, yeah. Is that the truth? What was it? I just seen an operation being performed. Do you believe that God will make you well? If I ask you, do you believe, audience, that God will heal this woman? Will you pray with me for her? Come here, mother. 
Don't you? When I take a little old wrinkled up hand like that, you don't know how it makes me feel. Lord. I think of my own mother. There's been a, that's probably stroked back the tears of many babies' eyes, cried, rocked in the sleep, done a many hard days' work, washed. God bless them. Our Heavenly Father, as I hold this little feeble hand tonight, I'm thinking of my own little old mother back under tonight, praying. And I pray for mercy for this, our dear sister. I pray that you will take away this hideous demon, take it away from her, that she can be well again. Grant it, Lord. And now, Father, I pray that you will fulfill what you said in your word. In my name they shall cast out devils. You said so, and I believe you. And now, upon the authority of your word, as your servant, coming in a representative way of Calvary, where you won all the victory over the devil and fall principalities, and now, Lord, as representing you here on earth, I challenge this demon in a duel of faith and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of the woman. God bless you, Mother. Go on and eat your supper now. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. Amen. Sure, the woman will get well. You believe? Have faith. Believe us. Now, everyone, bow your head. This man's deaf. I feel the spirit moving against me. It's deaf. Just bow your head so we can get a hearing from you. Come here. O oh God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, giver of every good gift, send thy spirit upon the man in healing. And this demon has come upon the man to cause him to walk before a vehicle and be killed, sent to a premature grave. God, he's come reverently tonight to the platform to be healed of this horrible thing. And I pray for faith, almighty God, that'll make it leading. Now, hear the prayer of your humble servant. Thou spirit of the devil that has bound my brother, I charge thee by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who comes to this earth and fought principalities and robbed Satan, and you have no legal right to hold him anymore, and we stand under the commission of Jesus Christ that they shall cast out the devil and come out of the man. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, you may raise your head and look this way. The man, I didn't know how deaf he was, just a deaf spirit. It's like a dark, cold shadow. I kept moving to him. I hear perfect hearing now. Listen just a moment. Come here, sir. I'm going to whisper real low. This microphone is very sensitive. Amen. Amen. I love the Lord. Yeah, I love the Lord. Say glory to God. Glory to God. I'm whispering. See, this, I will put my hand over this microphone so you won't hear it. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now, just barely whisper. Listen to this. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Sir? I can hear you playing, yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
a little school up here in Washington, we have a stated notary public that nine people from a deaf mute school, all nine of them was talking in here normally when they left the platform. And uh, many times. Now, here's what does it. If you look this way, I can rest just a moment from them visions, you see. Perhaps if a man had lost his hearing, now the doctor, he would look into the man's ears and examine, take an x-ray. Maybe there's a bone pinching that nerve. If there is, the doctor will move that bone and, and the man can hear again. The, the nerve will become energized. But did you know what if he looks in there and says there's nothing to be done, just like was on this man here, because the nerve was dying in his ears. Now, if the nerve dies, it's just like here's something on my hand. I look close to every word in the balcony. And say, what if I had a transparent band around my hand? And it's shutting off the circulation. My hand would become glue. And the doctor would come and he'd look and say, Well, I don't know, Brother Branham. Just the, the nerves is dead from right along here out. Now, the only thing a doctor can work on is what he can see or what he can feel. Is that right? We have five senses. See, taste, feel, smell, and hear. And only two he works on now is what he can see or what he can feel. Well, if them nerves are dead, well, he might cut this finger off. He might put salve on it. He might do anything. It'll never get well until this band's moved. Is that right? Then when the band's moved, then circulation automatically takes place. Is that true? Well, what the Bible said, when the death spirit... Is that right? Death spirit spirit came out of the man, he could hear. Now that's exactly what taken place just a few moments ago. When the deaf spirit left the man, he could hear as he whisper. What taken place? You can't make a spirit go unless it's passed out. Well, when the spirit is gone from the thing, circulation takes place again and the body becomes active. Do you see what I mean? But if the spirit, the deaf spirit, went out of the man, he could hear. Now, that's the way it was in the Bible. That's the way it is here tonight, just the same as it was then. That's the way it is here tonight. All right. Will you come? Now, as you come, sister, will you come believing with all your heart? You do. If God will reveal to me exactly, I for a look at you. You put your hand on my shoulder here just a moment. Now, I'm going to look at the audience. So it's, just, it's not mental telepathy. If God will reveal what's wrong with you and show me a vision I hear exactly what's wrong with you, will you accept it? Will you accept your healing? You will. Now, may the Lord God grant it. Well, if he will, I can. If he doesn't, I can't. Yes, sir. You, uh, you have diabetes. Isn't that right? If that's right, raise up your hand. I've seen the blood dripping. It looked kind of thin, white-looking. You believe he's going to heal you, has healed you? God bless you, and God bless you. Go in this season in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's say thanks be to God. All right. Now, lady, as you come, just come looking this way. Do you believe if God will reveal what's wrong with you, you'll accept your healing? You will? You want to deal with that heart trouble? You do? Raise up your hand. Say, I want to deal with the heart trouble. You do? And go receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be made with help. Let's say thanks be to God. Sir, about you, do you believe with all your heart? You do? You believe that God will make you well? Uh -huh. Well, you got stomach trouble and heart trouble, too, and you want to get well, don't you? Is that right? Go eat your supper. Jesus Christ makes you whole. All right? Believe with all your heart. Just, just have, now, that's what you do to have faith. That's what stimulates to get the people... I thought you was holding your hand up... All right, come. Bow your head here. Another person. Almighty God, who made heavens and earth, all things in them, is who made us. Lord, I pray that you'll be merciful to this woman. She's under privilege to hear the gospel. Therefore, Lord, without any faith, without being able to hear maybe the message, I do not know. 
but this death spirit has her bound. I pray that you'll deliver her this very hour. And that it might be known that you're God, and we're your disciples, and we're your servants, and you've raised from the dead, and you're living among your people tonight. I say to this death spirit, come out of the woman in the name of Jesus Christ. I keep your heads bowed just a moment. I please everyone with your head bowed just a moment. I don't want to be quiet. Hear me over here. Hear me over here. All right, raise your hand. Here's her death trumpet. We had to take it out of here. She couldn't hear me first, but now she can hear me. Hear me now? Say amen. Hear me now? Say amen now. I love the Lord. Amen. God bless you now. Go on and rejoice. Everybody no more. All right, come on. You believe with all your heart? Would you like to go eat supper? Enjoy your meals like you used to? You got a kidney trouble too, haven't you? Something wrong in your back. Is that true? That's true. And then you also got the you got a peptic ulcer in the stomach, which is caused from a nervous condition. Is that right? Makes your food sour and you belch it up and have stomach trouble. Is that true? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? You do? You've longed for a closer life with God too, isn't that right? You profess a Christian, but you don't live like you should live to be a Christian. Isn't that true? That's right. Then go tell God from this hour on you'll serve him with all your heart, will you? Will you do it? Then in the name of Jesus Christ, go and be well and eat your supper. God bless you. Let's say thanks be to God. Amen. Lady, if God doesn't help you, you're going to die right away with a cancer, and you know that. Is that right? You believe he helps you right now? God bless you. Go and be made well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say thanks be to God. God is here. All right, come, lady. Anybody out there can be healed if you'll just believe. Do you believe? Oh, my. This is the way I like to feel the Holy Spirit settling on the people. If you just let yourself loose to God's blessings and His Spirit. I know it's strange to you. What's the matter, Reverend? You want to get over that sign of trouble you got? <laughs> You're sitting there praying about it. How'd I know you as a minister had signs? What's the matter, Mother? Or you think about your little girl sitting there next to you, isn't that right? Hasn't she got borrows all, something breaking out with borrows, isn't that right? Put your hand over on her. She's going to be well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Holy Spirit here, friends. Who all I ask you to do is believe, have faith in God. Just believe with all your heart. Oh, isn't he lovely? You believe, lady, with all your heart? You have some sort of sinus trouble. Isn't that right? You have some kind of a, a, a kidney stone, too, the doctor said. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Here's another thing. I'm not reading your mind. And I'm not here to say anything to you, but you realize you're in the presence of a supernatural being. You're not living or living a life that you should satisfy with God. Isn't that right? You've gone away. You've been praying about that the last few days. Your sins are forgiven you now, and you're healed. Go on your road. God make you well. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. No, I never forgive her sins. I've seen God did over. She was accepted to send right there. That's when God made her well. Amen. Come, lady. You believe you're healed as you walk across the platform? You believe it with all your heart? Will you accept it? I can't heal you, lady. It's up to you. Do you believe it? Come here. God, be merciful to you. I pray, God, that you'll have mercy upon the woman, and may she go, and may you deal with her, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Come, sir. 
You won't get over taking this one, that old, that old diabetes that leaves you. Is that what you want? All right, God bless you. Go on your road and rejoice. You say thank you to God. Do you love him? Say amen. Sure, we believe him with all of our heart. May the Lord God bless you. Come, lady. You believe that heart trouble left you when you crossed the platform? Bless you. Amen. Go on your road. Thanks be to God. Amen. I love him and I believe him. If you want to believe him, all right, that's up to you. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, Joe, that positive trouble sitting there, sir? Believe that God will make you well? Study back there in the second row. If you believe it, God will make you well. You do? All right. Stand up and accept your healing, then. Stand up to your feet. Say, I accept my healing. God bless you. Been nervous getting up, going back and forth at night. That'll stop now. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to get that hernia sitting on the end of the row, sir? You want you to stand up on your feet, then, and say, I accept my healing for that hernia. God bless you. And you can go home and receive yours, if you believe it. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you think, young sir, sitting there with your collar back was rejoicing because that man is healed? You believe that? You don't have a prayer card, do you? You like doing that hay fever you have? Would you? All right, you can stand up and get yours. All right, God bless you. You will be healed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, you're in his presence. And he's here, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. How do you do, sir? I believe you're a good, sincere man. You love the Lord? You do. Say, you've been a soldier or something, you've been shot or hurt. Isn't that right? And that's in the right lung. And the doctors just put a plate in there. Isn't that right? There's somebody standing by your side that I've seen before. It's been a... It's a woman that was standing here a while ago. Your wife, wasn't it? Yes, sir. She was here just a few minutes ago. Something I, I recognized the woman. She's standing by your side. Did some... Or, now, there's a spirit moving from this away. Move this way a little bit, brother. That's your brother and mother sitting right back there. The mother, she has... Uh, 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 high blood pressure, gallstone. Yes, sir. God be merciful to you, Mother, and make you well. What do you think of a sitting on the end of the seat with epilepsy? Do you believe with all your heart that God will heal you? Stand up to your feet and accept the thing. Amen. Let's say thanks be to God. God is standing here to make every one of you well. Go, brother. You're scared that's going to bother you. It won't. Go accept Jesus Christ and go be made well. How many of you here wants to be healed right now while the Holy Spirit's are moving? We got nights to stay. I'm going to ask you something. I want you to put your hands over on one another and let me pray. If God will cast out evil spirits from... How much more would our Lord Jesus Christ have to do to prove to you he's in this building? Moses has given two signs. He went and performed them one time before Israel and they listened to him. If you believe me to be God's servant, you listen to me. Jesus Christ healed you 1,900 years ago when he died for you. He's right here, right now in this building. His presence, the resurrected Lord Jesus, is right here. And every one of you can be healed. The only thing I ask you to do is be just deeply, sincerely, and see if God doesn't make you well. Now, I see God healing right on out through the building. I see a woman sitting there with a black hat on who had high blood pressure. She's just been made well. She's sitting next to a lady with a brown hat on. Or just made well, just saying, here's a lady over here with a female disorder. She's just made well. God's healing all out through the audience there. Oh, God, our Heavenly Father, we just thank Thee, our precious Lord, for all that You have done for us. Your great being is near, and You're here to make every one of the people well. And I pray thee, dear Heavenly Father, that right at this moment, that you will take every person here into your divine arms and make 
all the sin of unbelief be scattered from this building. May the fire of God begin to fall. May the power reach down and pick up the people and shake them, Lord, and let them realize that this is the day of their visitation. This is the time that the Lord has set. This is the time of their healing. When the deep's been calling to the deep and you hear God spreading forth his arms over this audience tonight and showing signs and wonders, well, God, I pray that you'll take all unbelief and skeptics, drive out every demon of unbelief and all the formal and godly indifference and, and take this people and heal every one of them, Lord. Have mercy. Now is your servant. I ask every unclean spirit that's in this room as God's prophet, I ask every devil to be cast away from the people that they might go from here tonight free. Almighty God, creator of heavens and earth and author of everlasting life, hear the prayer of your servant and grant this tonight through Jesus Christ, thy son. Now with your heads bowed, set close, believe with all your heart. Come here, Brother Bob, for just a moment. Every man and woman now, set tight in with God. Now, I want you to repeat this prayer that I tell you. Now, you repeat it. I'm going to repeat it, and you just pray it. I'm going to say it, and you repeat it. Surely, God, I know what it takes to defeat Satan. If God has so confirmed it here tonight to prove to you it's the truth, and I see the end that light hanging over this audience right now like a, a stream of cream looks like. I've told you the truth, and God testified it's the truth. And while we're just a little bitty group of people sitting here together, why not let this whole group be healed tonight? Now you repeat this prayer right after me everywhere. Almighty God, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, send our blessings upon thy servant. For I am desperately in need. I have seen, I have heard the gospel, and I believe now, Lord. Help thou my unbelief. And now for a long time, Satan has bound me. But I realize tonight that he has no legal rights to hold me. I am a Christian. And I claim my God-given privileges. And from right now on, I accept my healing. I'll go from this building glorifying you, standing on your word, for I believe.